we'll, we'll start with flutter first we'll get a brief overview of everything like what is flutter and everything we need to know about it and after that uh, we'll we'll start uh, we'll get to know the installations the everything you need to everything uh, we need to install when we are uh, using flutter on our computer so let's start with flutter so, so first question uh, uh the first thing when as a developer which come to comes to our mind is mobile platforms like 10 years ago we used to have these four mobile platforms there used to be blackberry there used to be windows phone android was there and ios was also there after a few years maybe almost 10 years ago blackberry got out of the market so as a developer we we, we need not to concern about that operating system after a few days uh, windows also got obsolete so it was also out of market there was no windows phone after few, uh, like almost five years ago i think so in today's date there are only two major mobile operating system that we are uh, uh, concerned about so as a developer we have to be uh, concerned that the apps or any software that we are making is compatible with uh, android also and ios also so let's see what was the traditional way of making a software for both these operating system so these are the two operating system that are very much popular in the market and almost every mobile device has oh, both of these any of these okay but there's a constant war between developers because developing apps in for these platforms require a, a very separate approach like it used to be before before these uh, cross platform frameworks came into picture before before almost uh, few years ago you need to have different teams for different uh, different operating system like majorly the android and ios okay but yeah both uh, we need to have different teams because both of the operating systems are very different in their core both of them have very different functionality uh, their kernels are different because so we have to be also checking that we can communicate easily with the hardware of that uh, operating system okay so this is where yeah this is the, the dilemma of mobile app development okay so first we have this approach that develop a native app for each device and maintain sev several projects okay so sev uh, suppose you have you have a company and you have to make a software or an application for all the operating systems in that case you have to go you have to do you have to build an uh, separate team for every operating system because the process is wholly different you have to do you have to use uh, different approaches for different operating systems so as you can see the, the first uh, picture that we have is it has a very complex way when 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 it came to developing native native apps for uh, different kinds of operating system okay then uh, again we have the second way but yeah first oh, first also one thing to notice in the first slide is that the end point of that uh, of that approach is a castle so we can think of this like the native apps are very good when it comes to performance the the feel and look of that uh, native apps are also very good but the only concern is the way of we reach that point that we have every software ready that is very difficult the, the other picture you see is we have simple using some cross platform frameworks the hybrid frameworks that we have like phone gap adobe accelerator uh, and in, in in that case we have to maintain only single project but the end result is not so good like we are getting a very broken uh, app broken over this you can compare it with an application the native applications are something that we can compare to a castle and the hybrid applications are like uh, they are not so good because there are performance issues in them they not they not they do not perform as far as the native apps so we need to get some other way of doing it we have to make we 
we have to get a solution for doing this that we also don't need to do so much hassle for in development and also we also want the our uh, software or application to be good in performance and the the way it looks and the whole ui part also okay so we, uh, we uh, here we can see we have two approaches when it comes to mobile app development specifically i, I will will not uh, cons will not be concerned about the web part for now um, it will be will be looking at that also for now we'll be concerned about the approaches that we can use when when it comes to mobile app development specifically okay the first approach would be a single platform application that is go for an android app and use the traditional way of developing android apps using java kotlin and all that things and, and the sub second approach that we have is we use an hybrid application yeah the second approach is the cross platform approach okay in that we have two two options ek to we can develop an hybrid applications okay so what is an hybrid application i application i'll tell you a hybrid application is something like an it is a cross platform it can run on various operating systems but the issue is it doesn't have that native native application file it 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 runs in inside a browser like uh, think of something if you have you if you have used view torrent you get an web app of that if you have heard the term that web applications that that is a part of that is also a kind of hybrid application because the native like it is not um, that good and it, it it runs under a mobile browser so again we are we are not that the feel the dev, the user experience will not be good when we use when we are developing in hybrid application and another way in, another way of doing that in the cross, cross platform approach is the native application so in native we have two major frameworks in today's day we have flutter and we have react native so okay so that 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 comes that is the part of native application development in um, inside cross platform okay in in single we, we all know that how we do app development in, in a single platform application okay we ha we have we have different type types of um, development team and we do that in a very vigorous and vigorous process for that okay uh, so let, let, yeah let's this is the native traditional way of developing an application if you are concerned about ios you need to develop an app using their xcode and the using their program languages like swift swift is a very awesome language to learn like and the apps out of it are very beautiful and very 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 user friendly and another option is objective c but objective c is very much obsolete now no one uses objective c in today's date it was back in 2011 12 that people used to uh, use objective c and swift came in 2013 since then, uh, ios applications are being developed using swift only apple ha apple has every application which we have in our app apple phone uh, is is in today's date is built with using swift okay the other approach we have for our android android platform we have kotlin kotlin also is a comparatively very new language kotlin came in maybe i think 2014 15 i don't know the exact year and the, the previous way of using doing that was using java java like both of these approaches were very stable the apps built with them were very very good in performance uh, but still the only problem was it was not so much developer friendly like developer used to used to face very much issues when they using this or uh, traditional approach of dev app development so ah yes another this is how a native app gets built the whole thing okay uh, first we build the application in in these these languages and that that uh, that application is directly converted into a native one without any bridge uh, we do is like it's purely native code and it directly gets built into that native application no issues in this uh, the 
the hardware the communication with the hardware of the device is also very seamless using this approach you don't have to do any you don't have to use any third party plugins for using the camera of the phone or using the bluetooth wifi any do anything which you need in your app everything you can do very seamlessly if you are using the native approach but again i as i told you the issue was that this this approach is not so much developer friendly so we came with another approach like few years ago few people came with another approach that is the cross platform approach okay cross platform approach we first saw that the hybrid ap approach of doing that the hybrid approach was yeah as i told you building an application which which would run under a web browser okay so we used to code that application using the uh, javascript html css like we design a website and again there used to be a bridge after which uh after which the the application used to get built but the but they were not as good as compared to the native applications we used to have various issues so there there came an another approach for doing that the the cross platform approach okay the cross platform okay so someone is i'll close my video is the audio is if you guys are having issue in is my in my audio now is it fine okay thank you okay uh, okay so let's start or the i told you about the uh, hybrid approach that we used we built an app inside a web browser that would run inside a web browser the very famous of that was ionic ionic used to be very famous few years ago uh, cold war was there but again there were issues so the, there was another cross platform approach and using the xamarin xamarin used to be used to code our apps using c sharp and the but you we used to have that bridge between the the native code and the and the and the our cross platform uh, code so there there were again there were many issues using them because of this bridge here also in react native and native script react native was very popular few years ago like it was it it is old as compared to flutter that's why it was popular but now it is many companies are moving towards flutter because uh, react native has, does not fulfill that their needs because react native is built in javascript and we know that javascript is not something which is very much um, good for mobile app development it is not meant for everything i think people are trying to use javascript in everything in today's day but again you can't do everything with a single language languages are built for different types of works so again there were issues in this approach there used to be this javascript bridge as you can see here when when we used to compile our apps to the for the native native devices there used to be this javascript a bridge that's why the process was little bit uh, not so good and uh, the process was not so good and again there were issues so there came this flutter approach so flutter came i think back in 2016 something the first flutter uh, uh, sdk came out and in last year october the first stable release of flutter came out okay For last year in october okay so it is very new but we can see the code that we use the code that we built in dart is directly converted to the native code for their respective operating system okay if we are coding the uh, if we are built in code that code will directly get compiled to an ap uh, and native code for android and different native code for ios like we can build or uh, we can build a uh, an android apk also and also an ios application with that single dart code but also it it is very stable we don't have any performance issues in this 
uh, the communicating with the device apis is also very much good in using flutter yeah for now we have to use many third party plugins but still uh, that that would be covered when you know, when flutter grows and it is it, it will be developed after a few years but still for in today's days also it is very much stable and there are no almost no issues you can if you are considering a small application building Uh, building you know, using flutter then i don't think you will face any issues any performance issues or any device apis issues okay so it is pretty stable now it has been almost um one year since we have the stable release and yes so you can see here there was a developer who used to work with react native few years ago but now he is love he is falling in love with flutter so let's start what is flutter okay flutter is is google's sdk built built by google and maintained by them there is an open source project it is it is open source it is free to use uh, you can go to the you can go to github and see the whole source code of flutter okay yeah it, it first is first point to note that the apps that we built using flutter are very neat like we have when we are coding for that we have control for every single pixel of our screen we don't have to care about uh, like um, if if you if you know uh, native a uh, native android development there we used to use markup language we used to use xml for defining the layout of that app and we used to do the logical part using uh, java or kotlin but here we don't use any markup language we we directly code the ui also we code in dart and the logical part also we code using dart only okay so yeah the this is the this is something the google flutter team wrote on their website so can, we can control every pixel on the screen we can make our brand come to life yes this is a very important point for us developers because using flutter is has by using flutter app development has become very easy we like uh, we don't have to have many experience for doing that we can get started with because it is very easy to use so we can get started with it uh, within almost i think two months or two months would be more than enough if you are really getting into flutter development and yes never say no to your designer never see and this also point is very interesting suppose in a company you have a designer who designed an whole ui like you know you be develop a design using adobe xd or something so if 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 we use if we if we want to code that same design into an working app using the native approach using the traditional way of doing that would be very much difficult to do but yeah using flutter we don't have to worry about that uh, that uh, dev- designer design we can easily convert that design into code and make an working app out of it okay when we can stand out of the marketplace because yeah in today's date everything is rapid also so the development thing is also very rapid we need apps built bit, within few days so yes we can do that because this approach is very time saving and when awards with a beautiful ui yes google organizes various competitions if you are really into this google has their competitions where you can submit your applications and if the ui is good they also have any prize prices for that okay uh, that is the later part uh, but let's get started yeah um, another point first point was the apps the ui is very beautiful very neat because we have control over every single pixel okay the second point which i like to mention here which would the the performance of that apps that we built using flutter so yes the, the we can build up to 60 fps uh, like compatible apps like we can show 60 frames per second g- using the gpu accelerated and if also if we want to design games using flutter you can also use the flutter game engine like it's still very new but if you are, if you want to do that you can also do that because it con- directly compiles to the native machine code and it, it, it no no matter what architecture or what type of processor you you have we can build like you have when you are building an a flutter application you have an option to build 
uh, apps for various types of pro uh, uh, processor architecture. Yeah, you can build it for ARM. You can build for the x86 architecture. You can do that, but that's the later part. Let's see the next point. So productivity. Yes, productivity also. You like the native way of doing what that was. We, we whenever we code, we have to again rebuild the app to see the changes. And you, in, you all must be knowing building an app takes time. Like if you are, uh, if you have coded the thing and you have to convert uh, APK file of that thing or the iOS file of the uh, iOS file of that thing that used to take a little bit time, almost two three minutes. But in Flutter you have a feature called hot reload. So using hot reload you can do like you can just press a button and within fraction of seconds you can see the changes uh, directly in your app. Like Suppose you have uh, made a like a thing relate this with the web part. Okay, when we 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 develop something or uh, for the web app website or something, we code in HTML and we can if we uh, we save file and uh, re, again reload the reload the uh, web page, we can directly see that uh, change within a second or within a less than a second. The same feature we have. In like kind of same thing we have in Flutter, we can also we can uh, see our code change within second using this hot reload function. Okay, we paint your UI to life. Yes, we can do almost anything we can imagine for a uh, beautiful app. We can do anything. Iterate rapidly on feature. Yes, we can we can do that using Flutter. Yeah, test hypothesis quicker than ever. If you if you if you're if you're coming from the testing background, you must be knowing that in in big companies they have very vigorous testing, like they have specific developers for the testing part. So the testing part is also very easy in Flutter. You can do they directly give you a test folder for that, and we can directly write the unit test and all in that. Okay, but okay, we are developers. We are not concerned about the testing part for now. Okay, and the the second last point is single code base for faster collab. I think you all must be very familiar with this. I've been telling this from yesterday that we have a single code base with that. We have we have applications for almost four platforms in today's date. Uh, Flutter is supporting I Android, iOS, and it is also supporting web. We can develop website using Flutter, but that is in the still in the deep beta phase. And we can also for Mac OS, if you if you if you have into Apple development, if you you know that we have to we have some specific application for Mac OS, we can also do that using Flutter. So yes, but the Mac OS part is in the alpha phase, web part is in the beta phase, and the and the mobile part is is, is stable and we two platforms would have some issues because they are still in the development phase but they would be stable very very soon okay so yes first what is flutter flutter is the next step in app development i told you these four points already speed and performance very very good flexibility yes we we can customize almost anything on our on our screen Native look and feel. Yeah, this is a very important point. That apps that we built should be native. Like, uh, if you if you are using Apple phone, you have little bit difference than an Android phone. Like using when in the UI part, you have little. Some things are different. Like the pop-up boxes sometimes are different. The page transitions that we do in iOS and Android are very different. So yes. Uh, we have to keep that things also in mind when we are doing but in flutter we can do that very easily we have we have all two separate packages for doing that we have a material package which is everything the android package think of it like an android package it has uh, everything that we we need for developing a native look and feel android app like it, it would feel like a very much android app and uh, for the iOS, we have a Cupertino package. In that Cupertino package, we have all the components that we need for making a uh, native iOS apps. Again, we will look into that once we get when we once we start with the coding part. 
Yeah. And the rapid development also I told you because you have a single code base, you can do development uh, tasks very fast. Okay. What makes Flutter so unique? Uh -huh. Again, this point we have so much cross-platform frameworks in today's date. But why Flutter and why it's so unique? And why many developers in today's date are moving towards Flutter? Even big companies are using Flutter. I'll tell you, uh, Tencent, you know, if you know Tencent, that is a company which makes PUBG, I think. So they they have other services also. So they have started Flutter for their applications. If you know Alibaba, Alibaba, the, the something like the e-commerce thing in China they also started using flutter for their applications uh, Google is already using it for their various applications and projects and so yes why do you use it there is a reason for that because the the code get compiles to the native code without any bridge so yes that is very good yeah i told you no bridge needed and the last point is uh, no markup language needed okay so markup language uh, think of it like um, uh, in, in web part we have html for for doing the uh, markup and in native android we, we used to do that using xml but here we do do not we do not need any markup language we we define the whole ui also in dart okay Yeah, the, so the, the most important thing would be that that is uh, very like I could say it is very old at it, it was released in 2012. It has a virtual machine like you have in Java, you have JVM so that we don't have to uh, we don't have to be concerned about various types of processor architecture. The virtual machine takes care of takes care of that. Uh, like like also you have in java also you have the jvm so jvm because of jvm we are able to uh, run java code on any platform without any hassle so that same thing that also had that has that feature and yeah when 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 it comes to the web web part it it compiles to Uh, when when com when it comes to the compiles to uh, native JavaScript very fast, it is also very much uh, better than the handwritten JavaScript. I would say because it is getting converted into JavaScript that is done by a machine. So yes, uh, the native JavaScript it is better than handwritten JavaScript when you code something for web part, but that is not necessary for now. Uh, so yeah, who uses Dart? Google AdWords, Google Fuchsia. Fuchsia, I'll, I'll come to that uh, in a minute. Fuchsia is a very interesting thing. I'll tell you about that just uh, just after a minute. Uh, Google Fiber, AdSense. You know the the, the YouTube YouTube we they use AdSense for uh, giving us apps. Mandrill, Mandrill is a service by Mailchimp. Uh, they use they use Dart in their software. Google internal internal CRM they also use uh, that Adobe um, interesting thing here to note would be uh, now a few days ago almost a week ago uh, Adobe XD if you are knowing they released their Flutter plugin so you can directly import that Adobe design into uh, Dart code but it is very new but yeah that is a very interesting thing like. If you design something in Adobe XD, any UI, any layout, you can directly uh, extract a Dart code out of it. So that is a very interesting thing. It is a very new thing, but yeah, it, it will be uh, very useful when when you, if you are a designer or if you are into UI, UI, UX designing. One. Yeah, Google Fuchsia. So what was Google Fuchsia? Is Google Fuchsia is a capability-based real-time operating system currently developed by Google like um first problem i'll tell you what was there with with, uh, with android android uh, was released back in 2005 or something i think 
so android was built on a linux kernel okay but, but linux is linux kernel is not something made for touch screen devices and mobile devices but still it worked very much fine like we are using android today in today's date also there are no issues but but compare it with the apple ecosystem okay there you don't there whole the their apple ecosystem is very seamless you can connect across devices very seamlessly you don't have to do yes like think of it like we have a very much connection issue issues when it comes to android okay uh, when it comes to uh, our uh, android ecosystem okay but uh, yes um, but fuchsia is is a solution for that many people are saying that there is issue in my voice like do every does everyone have an issue like please uh, um, Okay. Like many people are having that issue. I think internet is not problem. My internet is working fine. Maybe there is a connection issue. Uh, we'll be taking care of that tomorrow. Please uh, manage today itself. You still so can my, continue. My my internet is working fine. I think I don't know. Okay. Uh, whatever the issue will be, we'll be uh, solving it today, and uh, yes, tomorrow yes. it won't be any problem for you to hear. So you can continue right now. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, I was talking about Fuchsia. Uh, Fuchsia. Yes, I'll I'll share the PPTs in the group. You, you can take a look at that. Uh, Fuchsia. Yes. Fuchsia is an like currently developed by Google. It is, uh, like. it google just rolled out its first github repository uh, like a, a month ago you can go on github and check out its repository and uh, google also released its uh, website the official website of fuchsia few days ago maybe so yeah fuchsia is an operating system that was uh, that was that is developed for the seamless connectivity because android does not have that uh, ecosystem that we android uh, the whole google uh, operating system does not have that ecosystem like we have an apple so so i these days google is also making many iot devices so fuchsia is something that will be able to run across the iot devices also our mobile devices so there will be one uniform operating system on every google device that we use okay because Uh, so they they are they have made, made a dedicated kernel for that it is called the zircon kernel you can read about it in on their website so this is not this will not be a linux based operating system this will be on the zircon kernel well kernel if you don't know kernel is the layer which which is there is there in between the your software and hardware okay so uh, in an operating system if you want to uh, communicate with the devices hardware then you, you the secure the software layer that you have in between is the kernel whatever request that we send uh, by using our uh, using our application that goes to the kernel and then the kernel communicates with the hardware of the device okay so think of it like that so yes fuchsia has a different kernel it is not using the linux kernel and also and the because of that linux kernel uh, android has various issues uh, it it also had various security problems so on a long run that the android wouldn't be that good if, if if we consider like that okay so yes after few days it may be there that uh, fuchsia would be replacing uh, android completely okay and so good news for us flutter developers is that google has said the official development tool of fuchsia would be flutter okay so the apps that that will be built for the fuchsia operating system will be built on flutter so that's why i i, I mentioned this thing so yeah this is a very good news for us if 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 you are into flutter development you'll be see you have a very very much opportunities in the future because fuchsia would be a very big deal after few years okay let's move on uh 
widgets okay let's uh, great looking and fast widgets let's talk about widgets what are widgets in flutter like think of it what are widgets everything you see on the on the screen when you develop an app when you have an app think of uh, it like a widget okay every single thing every button every text field every image app bar whatever you see in a flutter app is a widget and we we have all like various widgets I, I like almost thousands of them in flutter we have that them inbuilt we don't have to uh, write any code for them we have inbuilt widgets for everything so yeah i've, I've also written here what what are widgets in flutter everything in flutter consists of widgeting but not limited to visible screen text buttons as well as invisible container that that invisible screen or the white part that you see in the screen or uh, anything that is also a widget in flutter so every single thing that we are having that will be uh, having on the screen of our device is a widget when we are into flutter flutter world okay so think of it like that so what is a uh, widget okay first like it we will do nesting we'll nest uh, widgets uh, oh, like this okay uh, we have of uh, like if, if we are finalizing an app there would be a first app widget there would be a material and scaffold like these are just example that i have given if you have a simple application uh, which has only an app bar and a screen blank screen then you would have a final app widget a material widget and the scaffold widget scaffold widget think of it like an package that would help you to make uh, makes a, a ready made layout for your screen that would be the that that is the scaffold widget and inside the scaffold we'll have all our buttons containers text columns rows whatever that is we'll we'll, we'll look into it in detail okay yeah everything is widget but yeah there are two types of widgets in flutter the first one is state less widgets and, and and the other one is state full widget okay so i go into example stateless widget an image consider an image a uh, stable image that you have that 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 would come under stateless widget a text if if you have a stable text that is not going to change that would come under stateless widget and stateful widget consider like very basic difference of that would be a stateless widget is something which ha does not have a state and a stateful widget is something which has a state like uh, in an easy word would that would be like stateful widget is is going to change like it it's going to change its shape or color or anything it it is going to change and stateless widget is only built one time as soon as the screen we have a screen rendered the things that are constant that are not going to change would be stateless widgets and things that will be going to change okay that that would be the stateful widget i'll give you an example if you open up the instagram app okay the heart logo you have over there for liking the photo so consider that heart logo is a stateful widget because that its state will change when you tap on it it will grow go to red color and if you again tap on it 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 will go the background color but consider the image or you know, the image which you have above the heart logo that image is not going to change that image is going to be there only it is stable it is not going to change so it is a, it, it will come under a stateful stateless widget and the the things like the i told you the heart logo that you have in instagram app that will, that is going to change we can change it in finite time uh, when we are doing it so yeah that would be a stateful widget okay uh Uh, moving forward yeah see i've i've given here the example sir but we can scroll a photo right yeah you can scroll it but it's not changing its state no it's there once it once the whole your feed is rendered on the screen it's there it, it's not going to change like if, if uh, it is not going to, if you have a photo it's not going to change but the logo or anything like so the circle that we have it also do animations uh, that is going to change okay don't worry about that when when we start building apps this this this, this thing will will get clear for now just consider anything which is going to change its state is a stateful widget and any uh, anything which uh, yeah anything which is going to change its state or it is a stateful widget and anything if if it's not if it's constant if it's not going to change then it is a stateful widget think of it 
for now think of it like that don't uh, don't be confused in that okay yeah uh, this you can you can see there in diagram yeah? in uh, in a constructor we build a widget it can be only built once okay and create state we can re render if you like uh, one more example a stateless widget is immutable like you can't change its state and it it a state full widget is not immutable immutable it can be changed it can be shaped anything okay Uh, this idea would be clear once we start coding for now don't, don't uh, worry much about this okay again one more stateless widget input data yeah see like this input data data once we gave it give it an input like once uh, don't think of it like it's every time changing it is going to change every time but think of it when we build the screen okay i told you in instagram the screen is only built once when we open the app if we refresh that that will be again going to get the whole uh, it will go in the database and get the screen but once the screen is built it is there it is not going to change now don't don't like so that would be an example of that see we have an input data once we gave it an input it 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 it, it is a widget and it got rendered on our screen on our ui okay in stateful widget stateful widget is very simple it it will directly get rendered on our screen okay but in the state in the case of stateful we gave it an input but it has its internal state also okay so and that internal state will change and our ui which which will be rendered on our screen will change accordingly uh, with the internal state okay stateless widget ah uh, also you can read this stateless widgets are immutable once drawn the built function in the stateless widgets yeah i told you it is only once built whenever we open up the app or we we open that screen it is only built once it is not going to build uh, rebuild again if we the only way of rebuilding it would be uh, opening that screen going back and opening the screen again okay to redraw stateless widget we need to create a new instance of the widget okay like the thing which i told right now we need to rebuild the whole screen if you want to change the stateless widget okay stateful widgets are immutable they can be drawn multiple time within within its lifetime okay uh, th these are the few examples of widget that we have on the flutter uh, flutter official website uh, we will we'll, we'll check out the flutter website also where we have very much exam very good examples of various widgets okay hot reload i told you it is like uh, you can check uh, you can write some code and check it where within fraction of second the changes okay with flutter there is no limit to your imagination i told you designing ui would be very easy for you flutter widget inspector yeah this is a feature that we get in android studio we'll look at look into it unit test versus integration test writing testing uh, testing test cases in uh, easy but yeah again we will not go in much detail for that we we are not concerned about the testing part okay uh, yes now we will we'll start with the installation of flutter we will we'll get the whole flutter uh, flutter thing running in our in our in our computer okay so i'll, I'll just let's just complete this ppt then i'll i will jump to the installation part okay these are just two command if you can keep in mind keep them and the the flutter doctor and flutter upgrade i'll show you when we do the installation id which we can use for flutter the first one is and you can go you can go for intellij and uh, vs code if you have a good pc uh, like if 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 it has 8 gb or 16 gb 32 gb ram then I, i'll suggest go for android studio and if you don't have like if you you ram or you, you don't have that powerful processor in your pc then go for vs code intellij and android studio are same there's no difference in them when when it comes to android development so the two options that we have here is android studio or either vs code again android studio is heavy i know it it, it consumes a lot of ram but again there is a reason for that android studio has many features and which could make it easy when you are coding or coding for flutter okay so if you have a good enough pc 
I'll strongly suggest use Android Studio. And if you don't have a good enough PC, go for VS Code. That would also work. Okay. So let's end this PPTL and go jump to the installation part. Okay. I'll share this PPT with you uh, in our WhatsApp group. Okay. So first, uh, let's open up the Flutter website. Okay. We'll open up the official Flutter website. Flutter dot dev. Flutter.io, anything. Yeah, the first link that you see on the screen, open that Flutter website. Uh, here you have documentation, showcase, community. Showcase, you have an example app, like various good developers have posted their apps. So you can see that in the showcase in community, they have like questions, something like stack overflow, maybe and documentation. We'll go, we'll look into the documentation once we are done with the installation. Okay. First we'll download, uh, we'll see how to download the Flutter SDK. Okay. So uh, when you scroll down, we, here we can see the get started in the get started page. We have three options, windows, Mac OS and Linux. Okay. So I have a windows machine I'll open up. And uh, like the process would be same. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you need to have Git in your system. If you are using a Mac or a Linux PC, the Git is, I think it is by default installed in your terminal. But if you don't have Git, just go to the Git official website, not GitHub. Uh, go to Git, Git's official website, Git download. Uh, here it will auto detect your PC and it will press on download. I've already downloaded a Git, so I'll not download it again. Okay, so download Git on your PC. Uh, if you are using a Mac or a Linux PC, you don't have to worry about that. They are, I think, they there it is by default installed on your terminal. Okay, so if you are using Windows, then only download a Git. Okay, so for uh, downloading the Flutter SDK. Either, uh, yeah, if you don't want to get into Git and all, you can also di uh, directly download the zip file of Flutter, okay? Uh, you can download this zip file and uh, unzip it in your folder, okay? And another way of doing it, we have this command. Why do we need Git? Okay, uh, like we need Git because we, we, we are downloading that Flutter XDK from their official GitHub page, okay? Here also they have given this command Git clone. If you are using GitHub, you, you must know the Git clone command. If you want to clone any repository from GitHub, we use this command. So we are doing the same thing. We, that is not something different. So just if copy this command, git clone and HTTPS uh, GitHub Flutter. See, you can see here, this is the official Flutter page. And from that, we are downloading the flat, uh, stable branch of that page, okay? If you can uh, directly do that, use, if you can also go to the Flutter, GitHub page. See here, you can you can also down clone this repository. But yeah, on their website they have mentioned that you should develop, uh, you should download the stable one. That's why I'll, I'll suggest you go just just copy this command. Don't worry about anything. Go in your PC. Uh, first, uh, you must be knowing how to uh, install Git. Just uh, when you download, you'll get this file. Uh, do next, 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 and uh, Git will be installed on your PC. Okay. Uh, then, okay, I'll show you once more. Uh, go in your uh, C drive, open up your C drive for, for Windows, create a folder named SRC over here, okay? Create a folder, uh, SRC, okay? I've already created this folder. Open up SRC. Here, either you can use the command, uh, the command prompt of Windows, PowerShell, anything, or either you can use Git Bash also. If you right click over here, you'll get this option of opening git bash over here you open up git bash copy that command uh, wait i'll just copy that command and we'll paste it on our git bash and open up uh, paste this command over here see uh, i have already installed uh, so it is giving me see i think i now it's visible for everyone i've already downloaded uh, i've already cloned the repository so it, it is saying that I already exist, uh, this repository already exists in my PC, so I'll not download it again, okay? But again, if you don't want to get into this whole uh, Git, Git thing, 
just go to the website you have you can directly download the zip file of that okay can we clone flutter in terminal by using github link yes you can you can do terminal i told you if you are using your linux or mac you have pre installed git in your, on your terminal here also if you don't want to use git bash you can go for the or a normal command prompt like if you go here and open up command prompt you can also do the same thing over here also you can copy that command over here and you can download that uh, repository that will clone your clone the repository in your pc okay so yeah i have cloned this repository already can i clone flutter on my terminal i have mac os yes you can do it i told you on mac git is pre installed but still if it's not there go and download git it's not a big deal okay uh, so yes i have down, I've already cloned the github repository i'll open up this here we have the whole um, source for source code of github uh, in the bin folder we have everything but still we will not get into it for now we downloaded the flutter sdk and it is there you can see the path i just i just did uh, i just uh, downloaded this in an S, i created an src folder in my c drive and i cloned it over here do the same process don't don't clone it in some other other folder this is the standard way of doing it okay you just make a src folder in your c drive and clone the repository in, in the src folder okay so i cloned it okay now we will we'll, we'll see we'll go and download um, android studio okay uh you see uh go to the official site of android there you can find android studio i uh, see it, we have given the direct link over here accept it and start the download i've already downloaded it so i'll not do it again it will directly give you an uh, an exe file so yes i've downloaded here uh, downloaded it over here see in my c drive this will give you an uh, exe file like this in this also you, you don't no need to do anything extra just open up in, install and do the next 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 once it gets installed i'll and after that what we have to do i'll tell you okay uh, it got installed i have its shortcut over here i'll open up android studio now okay Oh yeah, we'll start with that. Uh, we'll start with the we'll build uh, we'll build our first project just after few minutes. I'll just showing how to uh, add the plugins and all in your Android Studio for Flutter because by default the plugins are not there. So you need to add some plugins for that for using Flutter in Android Studio. Okay. So when you when you go when you download Android Studio, you'll get the screen like this, and down here you have this config configure. Uh, section here you go in plugins if you open up the plugins uh, here you have the marketplace search for flutter and dart plugins i've already installed those plugin the flutter dart and i have you i'm using this material theme in that you should not worry about that it's not necessary but these two plugins are necessary if you if you want to do flutter in uh, android studio okay so i've downloaded this plugins i'll not i will not do go to that again one more thing Ah, okay. Uh, we'll uh, I'll show you how to download the emulator for uh, for you for your Android Studio. Uh, again, go to this configure section. Here you have this AVD manager. Okay, go to the AVD manager. See, I have two Android. I have two emulators, so they are giving me. But if uh, when you start from fresh, you will not get anything. So uh, here you down. You have the create virtual device option. You can choose any mobile. model that you want here we have various options nexus pixel okay go with anything choose one of them go next and download any android version that you want okay uh, i'll i'll suggest go for oreo for now don't use the android uh, q android q and r for now or download oreo that is stable and we don't have issues in that 
so once you start downloading this it will automatically build an uh, build that emulator for you again uh, when you uh, when you build an emulator uh, you will get this screen so here you can okay the you can edit the name of that ha huh. and one more part this is important the graphics rendering that we want for this device okay either we can do it go for automatic hardware software hardware would be it will use your uh, computer's uh, graphics card for rendering the uh, emulator and software it will use some software for rendering the emulator the hardware one is very fast as compared to the software but again if you have any driver issues in your computer i'll suggest go for software one um, but if you don't have any driver issues in your pc choose the hardware also if you keep it on automatic it will automatically select hardware or software whatever is uh, suitable for your pc okay which uh, which id you should i install to build an ios app ios uh, for ios all to you have the same process you can you, you have to you have to use android studio or vs code on mac also but um, yeah uh, the process is there only one thing is different you have to open up xcode you, you must be having xcode on your pc so open up xcode and there only one thing do one thing ki uh, start the ios simulator over there the process i uh, process would be like the rest of the process would be same the only uh, only different thing would be oh, you have to open up xcode and in xcode you have to start the ios simulator that would work okay baki the baki whole process will, is same oh, if you want an android device there on your mac also you can follow the same procedure and you'll get that android device there also okay so ab uh, ab uh, can you repeat the plugins plugins only two plugins we need uh, if you go in the marketplace there are only two plugins that we'll be needing for now um see uh, plugins only two plugins are necessary for now the dart plugin and the flutter plugin just we i uh, have these plugins are already by default comes when you when you download android studio all are these all of these are by default there the things we have to add is the dart and flutter plugin okay if you go here in the marketplace you if you search here you will get this okay yeah for vs code also you have to do the same thing there also you have a marketplace for plugin you go there you have various plugins download the two plugins for flutter and dart okay so same would be there for vs code also you don't have to worry about rest of the things just go there and search flutter dart if you do search flutter also dart would automatically come in your system okay so uh, before downloading the plugin you will not have this start new flutter project option when you add the plugin you'll get this option of starting a new flutter project okay so we'll start uh, we'll click on that here you have uh, options flutter plugin package module but for now we are also only developing an application so we'll we'll go with the application okay uh, here we have to give the name of our flutter web app okay so i'll name this uh, what uh, seminar okay i'll name this seminar and uh, you have to give the flutter sdk part over here so open up the the you know, c drive wherever you have downloaded the flutter sdk just give its path over here c src flutter that's all uh, i have i've not used any complex path in dart we surely need android studio installed for emulator no if you are fact i i didn't get your question if you are only doing dart programming then you don't need any emulator and all if you are building an flutter app or using dart then you need you need emulator you can also use your android phone if you have android or ios phone you can directly connect it with your uh, pc using the usb cable and the uh, just start the usb debugging in your phone it you will get that using in in phone you have developer options there you can go there and you can you can uh, enable the usb debugging and the, uh, the android studio will automatically detect your mobile if you are using a physical android uh, mobile or ios device in ios will only work with uh, the uh, mac but yeah if you are using windows you can directly connect your android phone with that okay so uh, i'll i'll we'll name the pro project name as seminar we i gave the flutter sdk path csrc flutter okay and rest we don't need to care about rest of the things yeah this is the project location 
the, the project uh, the location where my project will get created this is c users your name uh, users folder and android studio project okay i go next you have to the package name for your project you can use anything use the reverse pattern like com dot anything dot uh, the project name okay i'll finish and finish this up and i'll i'll get a pro and only i'll get a flutter project created once i finish this process Uh, well, like Android Studio is little bit heavy. You you all must be knowing it. Or when you are running it on, if you are doing serious app development in Android Studio, sometimes it just goes up to four GB or three GB of RAM. It eats up four GB of your RAM. So if you don't have a good enough configuration PC, I'll strongly suggest go for VS Code. Don't use Android Studio. Okay. So when we create a project, we get this default code. Okay. We don't have to care about this. we get this default code okay oh, don't be scared most of the 90% of this code is just comments okay uh, we will we'll get we'll see how this code works uh, I'll, i'll first show you how to start the android emulator okay here if you go in the tools here you have the abd manager just open up or uh, which device you want to open just play on uh, press the play button okay this will start your android avd okay you can see this will uh, yeah see my mobile got started this was the project uh, this was the default application that was there and i'll close this application okay now we have a fresh clean emulator for our device like uh, now let's go into our our uh, our project and see the structure of a project that we get by default when we create a flutter project okay so the first um, this dart tool idea dot idea folder we do not need to touch this folder these are not important for us they are by the by the default, default don't go and mess around with the, the, those folders yeah this android folder you get this android folder for your android one we have various properties like the gradle uh, gradle file and all the app folder you have uh, the android manifest dot uh, xml file this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, very much same to the native uh, if you are if you have done any native android development you must be very very similar with this kind of project project structure you, you there also you get this gradle gradle folder app folder okay so this is for the android part okay and for ios you have this ios folder for ios we have again we have that same some configuration files the runner.p list file and all we have all these um, files which are concerned with the ios part and the android files that we get in android folder are concerned with the android part okay so we don't have to care about it very much but when when we when we are using sometimes the third party plugins that we have to mess around with those files also how did you open the emulator just go here in the tools you'll find the avd manager section over here okay and here you'll find the uh, the emulators that you have downloaded so uh, if you remember some time ago i told you how to do download the emulator so here you'll get if you have not downloaded just down here you have the create virtual device option you can download the emulator from here but i have downloaded these two emulators i have already downloaded so just press the play button it will automatically open up your emulator and uh, it will show up okay uh, you can choose the model also whatever kind of shape uh, if you don't want a notch wala phone you can use the uh, one with without notch okay uh, okay so we'll let's go to our project so again uh, okay we are done with the android and ios folder they are for the native uh, uh, native things okay the they are concerned with their uh, separate platforms we we'll, don't also there also don't mess around with that code let it be if you want to add something uh, i'll will will look into that okay this lib folder is the only uh, lib folder is uh, is where we write our code okay the code that we write in dart we write this inside this lib folder 
everything they are every ui every logical part that you write for an application you write in this lib folder so almost 99% of our time will be concerned only about this lib folder the rest of the folders for now don't be concerned about them we'll need them but when we need them we'll we'll get into that okay but for now the lib folder is necessary uh, we'll we'll write every code that you okay um, now the test folder we have the test file of that but for now we are not into testing and all so we'll delete this folder if you keep this uh, this will probably give you some unnecessary error so just uh, for for beginners i'll suggest you just delete this folder we do not need this when we are doing a project uh, like doing a normal project when on a big scale you need it but for beginners i'll suggest just delete this okay i'll delete Git ignore folder. If you are, you you all must be knowing many many frameworks give this Git ignore file uh, when you are posting something on GitHub. These files got gets uh, ignored. Okay. Again, this metadata packages pubspec dot lock. We don't need to care about that. Don't touch these files. Ah, again, one more file. We pubspec dot yaml file. Again, this also had a whole lot of comments over here. We'll just delete the comments. I'll show you what this file has. Okay. Uh, this consider this file for adding the plugins that we'll be adding. It has our project name. This is a very important file also. Uh, if, if you all film this is yaml is also a markup language but it is very developer friendly uh, other as compared to xml either we can either uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, you all must be knowing if you are into java and all we used to use there the form dot xml file to there we used to uh, uh, add our plugins using xml or the other way of doing that is json and the uh, uh, most easiest way of adding plugins is yaml so fl in flutter we use we we use yaml for this okay in this yaml folder we have every uh, configuration of our project we have the name description the version of uh, our flutter sdk the environment the sdk version they gave here okay dependencies yeah if you need some third party dependencies uh, uh, we'll move a little bit fast now. Uh, uh, any doubt you write write down over uh, in the chat box. I'll I'll, I'll cover it uh, once we are done this project. We'll build project for now. Uh, after that, I'll cover up your doubts. Okay. For now, everyone write your doubts in the chat box, and I'll I'll look into it after ten or fifteen minutes. Okay. Ah, so yeah, dependencies. This is a very important section. If you want to add any third party dependencies. Uh, I'll show you where dependencies you have to for for adding dependencies. Uh, there's a website called pub dot dev. Go on this website pub dot dev. You have the whole Dart and Flutter packages. You'll get everything, every <coughs> third party dependency that you'll be needing. See, you have uh, here every package. If we are needing every any package, we can go to this website. We can search for the package uh, and we can use it in our project. Okay. So yeah, dependencies. See, for they give us this by default dependency called Cupertino icons. This this dependency is for icons that the Cupertino styled icons because uh, many people want that key. Uh, the uh, iOS phones have different kinds of layouts. No, that's what I told you. They have different icons. You have we can use the normal material icons for our material layout. But yeah, this is our one default dependency that we get when we. Uh, first, uh, open up the YAML file. Uh, rest of the things here, we have assets and all. This will be used to add. If you want to add any images in our uh, Flutter app, you can you know, do it from here. Images, fonts, uh, MP3 file, anything, any th any physical file. If we want to add in our file, we can do it over here. This is now commented out, but uh, we'll see. We'll see this how how to add uh, these assets and all in our uh, in our in our project. Okay. So uh, we uh, we are done with everything. Uh, we we we, show, we saw the project structure. Uh, we'll we'll start now.
uh, we'll we'll just uh, so flutter i told you flutter gave us this default code we'll delete this com comments because this for new new people this is kind of scary i think so we'll uh, clear up these whole comments and i'll show you what is happening in this code okay Uh, yes. So, so yes. Now we've cleared up the comment. So see, uh, yesterday we saw the main main function that we have. So here also we have the main function in which we called a method uh, called run app. And in run app we call this class uh, my app. Okay. In in this class we have our whole uh, app. Okay. So this material app widget. will have our whole data it has various kinds of widgets once we i'll, I'll just run it to you can run your app from here only you can press this play button or there another way of doing that will be or the easy or like this will again makes android studio to consume more ram so i'll i'll show you the another way using the command line how can we run our projects okay so you, for for running our projects in our com using the command line go to your pc uh, just find wherever your project is there in my case the project so in, was in the users folder and here i have this uh, pro folder called android studio projects so search for the android studio project folder here you have all your flutter project okay so i have this project name seminar that we just now created i'll i'll open up the command prompt uh, at this location i just type here cmd and press enter you will get this command prompt okay now i'm into the uh, into uh, uh, my seminar folder okay so to check everything is working fine uh, this command you you fire up this command to check that everything is working fine uh, go flutter doctor okay um to make sure our flutter is installed properly to check this run this command and this will check everything uh, in our uh, in our pc and give us the result okay so keep this mind this is a very useful command flutter doctor okay okay so it is giving everything is okay i have android studio intellij it is showing i don't have the plugin over there but still i we are not using intellij so i will not be into this okay so uh, now let's run our uh, run our application okay uh, the command that we will use for running our application would be flutter dot run flutter uh, space run okay this will build our application okay this this process will take some time until now we, i'll i'll just see your doubts okay this will uh, when you are doing uh, running the app for the first time this will take around 2 3 minutes okay to build up the build that apk file and also if if you are if you don't like doing this from the command line uh, just if you have the play button over here you can also build your projects by pressing the play button okay for now uh, i am using the command line because command line gives us more control over the commands okay so i'll see your doubts okay please explain the dart package the dart package okay uh dart uh, dart package is i will use it when we need it dart is something we need oh, suppose uh, if you have worked in any other framework you need some third party packages okay in your projects like the by default flutter gives gave us so many things but again on the top of that if you need other things okay if you need like something in a kind audio player suppose you are making an uh, music player app okay and you need an audio player for a mp3 file or uh, the flutter does not have that uh, by default uh, package for uh, playing an mp3 file for that we will we'll just go on this pop.dev website and we'll search for an audio player pack audio player package okay so audio player uh uh wait this player search for the play uh, the, it, it is there i don't remember it's but that is uh, uh, i remember 
music for we have a few plugins for playing music it is not uh, ah, see uh, he got the music player plugin or we have the assets audio player plugin you can use sheet music flute music player with the people have built many packages for this just open up this any uh, plugin that you want to play okay i'm 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 considering the example that you want to play an mp3 file so you can uh, inject this plugin in your project see uh, these are some uh, uh, these are some native things that we have to do in your manifest file don't be don't worry about that for now i'll just show you how to uh, add an a third party dependency or plugin in your project okay go in this installing section just copy this uh, version and the name of the plugin and in see my project got built during this time uh, and go in your yaml file below this dependency section uh, flutter uh, the yaml leave two spaces over here and copy this plugin okay and just uh, run this command pop dot get okay this will this will run the this will get the dependencies in your uh, the dependencies or the that plugin in your project okay so this is how you uh, add some a third party dependencies in your project just go to the pop dot dev website and uh, add this file over here okay so yeah our our project got built we'll look into that so this is the basic demo application that flutter gave us it has nothing it has an app bar there's this number so when we press this button number get number increases okay this is the default application you can see the code of for this uh, we have this in our main file it is nothing we use a column widget and uh, the this floating action button and on and on pressing we are executing the increment counter so that uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll build an app from scratch tomorrow uh, for now just you just consider just don't think about anything consider they have a column widget in which first they have this app bar widget then they had a column widget in which in the center of that column they wrote this text and this number and they have this floating action button this three widgets over there and they wrote some logical code by just press by which when we press this button the uh, the uh, thing uh, the uh, number over here get increased okay Uh, tomorrow we'll see this in very very much detail okay uh for uh, okay so uh, so one more question i have is uh dart flutter vs code i want without android studio how to run flutter and use our mobile for emulator please see for vs code also uh, i don't have v wait let me if i have vs code i'll show you how to install this Yeah, I have VS Code. So just install your VS Code. Uh, for now, I'll, I'll close my Android Studio. Otherwise, see, I accept this. Just do next, next. Create a folder in the Start menu. Add create a desktop icon. Just install VS Code. The standard process that you do for installing any any uh, software in your computer. why do we extend only stateless and stay not stateful widget we will 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 look into this when we start building our own application that is the dummy code don't worry about that tomorrow we'll be building our app our own app so we'll we'll remove this tomorrow we'll we'll just cut out this whole code and start writing our own code okay to today uh, we have 15 minutes so we'll we'll cover up your questions today if you have any doubts with flutter or the installation section just uh quickly uh, post it in the chat box okay see uh, i have my vs code got installed i'll open up vs code i'll close android studio for now because it 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 it, it eats up lots of ram okay so i opened up vs code here uh, extensions in the extension the your code search for flutter okay simple search for flutter uh, yeah you got it okay just install this install this uh, this plugin in your vs code one more uh, go for dart also 
go for dart search dart and yeah dart is also getting installed by default flutter so just install both of these devices okay so uh, we'll open up our existing project over here okay we'll open a file uh, we'll open our same project that we have opened in our uh, flutter app we'll open this project Okay, this is not getting over here. I'll, I'll, I'll drag and drop it in the VS Code. Okay, I have the shortcut for my Android Studio project. Okay, close this. See, I have this beef one app, uh, one project. I'll just drag this and open it with Android Studio uh, VS Code. Okay. See, once you once you open this. Okay. Uh, you will get this whole project over here. Uh, see down here, it automatically see here down. I, I can zoom it. I'm showing. See down here, you have this device section. The emulator was already running. That's why it's detected. Otherwise, uh, wait. I'll, I'll if I close the emulator. If I uh, here, you will get the emulator part. Okay, uh, you can build an emulator from here. For in Android Studio, we had a other kind of process. Okay, if, if I don't have an emulator, I'll close this. It, it, it will go away from here. And I'll show you how to open up your emulator from this VS Code. Okay, let's close VS Code and restart it. Okay, let's restart VS Code. See, here we got it. You see, here you, you are seeing this no device because no emulator is running. Click on this no device. Either you can see create an Android emulator and I have already uh, downloaded two emulators. So it is showing me here. So uh, even though you download it from there, you can use that emulator over here, over here also or you have, you have the same create Android emulator option in VS Code also. So if I press on this, this will launch my Pixel Pixel 3a emulator, okay? And Baki, the rest of process is same. I'll just zoom out. See, this got opened. Uh, this is the other emulator that I was using. Uh, okay, I had two emulators downloaded. One, I had the other Pixel 3 XL, and I have this Pixel 3a. Okay, so again, the rest of the process is same. You can, if so, you can uh, run your project using the uh, command line or you can uh, here also you have the run option so you can start uh, running uh, the project from here okay uh, so I hope uh, this is cleared okay and close the VS code can I find uh, yes flood VS code is standard VS code is going to VS code Android Studio is going to be same in your v, uh, Mac Windows Linux whatever you use so you don't have to worry about you will get all the plugins that you have here in Mac also okay how do I use Android emulator with VS code I just now told you okay why can't we use a stateful widget uh, stateful stateless widget both of them have their specific purpose when we are when we we'll build an app we'll uh, we'll look into application of both of them there, there are specific time when we have to use stateful widget. There are specific time when we have to use a stateless widget. Okay, why why did we use CMD to build the application? See, you can either use command prompt or either you have that play button in your Android Studio, or you can build your projects. So it's your choice. I I prefer command prompt because you have to only do simple Flutter run. You have to run that command and. When you run, you have you can directly do hot restart or hot reload. You pressing R, we'll see that tomorrow when we build our app, we hot restart and hot reload. 
but again if you don't want to use command prompt you have the play button in vs code also you have the run option in android studio you also have the play play button from there you can uh, uh, run our projects okay what are third party depends i told you sometime before that uh, some things uh, like we get in the flutter sdk we get things but in some cases we need some more things more pieces of code so that we can do suppose uh, you need uh, want to access the device's location in that case flutter xdk does not have that uh, that uh, 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 package for that in that case we use the third party dependencies and third, uh, third party dependencies we add uh, we just copy the name of the third party dependencies in our in our yaml file and we run the pub.get command okay um, i told you how to download the third uh, how to import the third party dependencies just go to the pub.dev website uh, open up whatever dependency you want there are, there are lots of them over here in the installing section you will get this name and version you just copy this name and version in your yaml file okay how can i use android emulator without android uh, studio why do you need android emulator without android studio uh, you can use there uh, you can go to the location where your android emulator and you, you have to type some commands you can uh, run your emulator using command prompt also uh, you can search for that commands i don't remember exactly but why do we why 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 do we need some uh, you have to do use that without android studio we will be using only for the testing purpose okay uh, questions ask questions we have 5 minutes any question see uh, here also i cleared out the whole main dot dart file from tomorrow we'll start working on this main dot dart files okay and this i was telling you from here you have this play button from here also you can run the project if you don't want to uh, do it using the command prompt okay uh, we built a project okay top dot dev i told you uh, also in today i'll i'll suggest go go to the official flutter website flutter dot dev and they have a very good documentation of flutter i'll suggest you go through the documentation today when you get time go through this docs section they have very neat and very clear documentation of everything see here they have this widget catalog get started cookbook in cookbook they have given some examples see how to do animations in our app how to design how to get forms gestures images I suggest navigation, networking, everything. Or a few examples in this cookbook section. And if you go to this widget catalog, they have this. They have given this at various types of widgets over here. You can go through these widgets today if you get time. And tomorrow we'll start. We'll we'll be explaining the all of these widgets and we'll be implementing all of these. But I'll, I'm I'm suggesting this. If you have time today, go just go through this documentation of Flutter. Okay. you have api docs if you want to uh, watch some videos of the the google official flutter google team of google you, you can go in this video section samples you have some few good flutter examples you can watch that also uh, can we see output without an android emulator how will you see an output of without an emulator what we are uh, at the end doing is building an app we are not uh, we are not doing core programming so that we will get that output in the uh the nr console if you are really want to practice dart for now you i told you yesterday you can go to the dart pad and you can practice over here uh you can practice dart over here and here you here you will you will get output in our yes yes the can we see ha okay that's what you meant ki running on your physical android mobile yes you can do it just do one thing in your mobile Uh, in go to the developer section uh, in that you will find the usb debugging um, um, enable that usb debugging and just connect your phone to your uh, computer using the usb cable the, by doing that you, the, the android studio will here here in this box that android studio will automatically detect your mobile and you can do that using your mobile okay just do one thing uh, 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 enable the usb debugging in your mobile and uh, you can uh, test your application using your physical mobile also 
if you don't want to do it using an emulator and all okay uh ask uh, any more questions for today i'm uh, i'm i'm suggesting all of you go through this website okay uh, we, here they have various examples i'll share this link on the group of this website this is the official flutter website okay uh, again uh, come on uh, uh, so ask questions if you have otherwise we'll uh, wind up for today so you have time if you have any question ask uh, ask them no questions everyone uh, yaml file uh, is similar to build.gradle no build.gradle is not yaml file think of it like an xml file in if you have worked with any other framework you have xml we use xml for adding dependencies over there no so yes we can uh, yaml is very much yaml is also a markup language only it is very developer friendly so if you are worked on any java based project there you have Uh, uh xml you you if you have worked on maven and all there you have add dependencies using xml okay so the process is the same only we are using different types of markup language you are using yaml to add uh, dependencies because this is very uh, developer friendly we can directly add our dependencies by running the pub dot get okay the flutter doc has examples section are the source code of yes if you don't also you can go on github i'll tell you github uh, flutter is the 10th most uh, starred repository on github so you have started if you want the source code of whole flutter thing also you can go on github again if you want to just uh, go through some example e e flutter go on github and search for any flutter project or you also have i think on the uh, flutter website also you have uh, various uh, examples okay uh, i'll i'll show you there are few examples also do you have any tutorial link for tutorial i'll su strongly suggest don't follow any random youtube tutorials uh, go to this uh, go to youtube and search for the their Fl official flutter website okay uh, sorry official flutter channel they have their own flutter uh, channel okay search for flutter see they have this own dedicated channel only for flutter you will find very interesting videos they post their um, uh, if they have conferences of google they post their videos over here and uh, this playlist they have they have this section a uh, widget of the week this is a very interesting thing um, they have this whole playlist for uh, widgets okay here here they have explained here they have dedicated videos for very see uh, here almost yeah 83 widgets they have explained over here so yeah, you go to this official uh, youtube channel of flutter only or the google developer channel they, there also they have uh, some videos for flutter okay and uh, don't was uh, okay this is also one suggestion don't follow any other tutorials because that may be very confusing for you because there are every developer has their uh, different approach when it comes to development i'm not saying they are not good or bad but you will get confused as a beginner um, these things may be very confusing okay so just go to the official documentation the the people who made flutter it's better read their work okay rather than reading from some other guy the people who made flutter they have written their uh, thoughts over here so just go to this official documentation okay go to this widget catalog and all okay uh okay so uh, flutter for wireless apple and i don't think you can do something like that for wireless for apple i'll suggest open up your xcode and start with their and and uh, the ios simulator only uh, android of, so instead of doing that wireless things okay okay so applications applications of what uh, can you specify that okay wireless applications the iot devices uh, we are talking about yeah for now i'll not go if you are developing that 
uh, I'll suggest go for native Android or iOS uh, for doing such heavy thing. Maybe that is because in that case you have to do more complex API. You have to communicate with the devices APIs. But as a beginner, you you are not going to build an uh, Alexa or some Google Dot in today's day, na. So for now, I'll suggest or there some Google uh, what we have that uh, thing in our the AI thing. Uh, in our mobile uh, of Android, we have the Google uh, Assistant, the yeah, Assistant. So we are not going to do that. Okay. So for now, consider Flutter is very good because comparatively new, its community is also very good. If you go on Stack Overflow or GitHub, but once as you grow, you'll get into that also. Okay. Is Xcode needed because it takes it takes lot of space. Xcode, you're not going to code in Xcode if you are considering the iOS part. You're going to code in, uh, you'll code, you're going to code into Android Studio only. But only in for opening the simulator, I think you need the Xcode. Baki, if if you know how to uh, do that using a command line, you can also do that. But Xcode is not necessary. You're not going to code in Xcode. You're going to code in other VS Code or Android Studio only. But only for the simulator, you need Xcode. Okay. So an iPhone can work in place of Xcode. Y yes, if you if you can connect your physical iPhone with your uh, MacBook, you can do that also. Same process. Just if you are you have to enable USB debugging. I'm not sure uh, iOS phones allow that. Or not because they have very security issues. They they do not allow things like this. But if you know if you if you can do it, I'll, I'll suggest go for that. But again, using a simulator is also would work. Or this would also work. You use an Android simulator with your device. That would also be the same process because the app which we built that would be the same for both the platforms. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that for now. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I guess we'll wind up for today. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll wind up for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll get into widgets. We'll we'll get thoroughly what are widgets, what are state play, stateful widgets, and some other the widgets, the inbuilt widget with Flutter SDK offers us. We'll study that. We'll build some apps. We'll build some basic app tomorrow. We'll study the layouts, how we lay our lay our components on the our screen. We'll from tomorrow we'll do that. Okay. So okay, let's wind up for today, uh, sir. Uh, yeah. Hello. Huh. So we can wind up. Yeah. Yes, yes, every doubts can... are been clear right now for today. Ah, so. Okay. Yes. And I suggest I'll, I'll every. Yeah, uh, and I suggest everyone to uh, download Flutter in their laptop or PC. So as uh, tomorrow when we are building our app, you can also get a bit idea about how to develop a basic app. Uh, is that right, you, sir? Yes, yes. I'll share the PPT with you, and I'll also also share the links of these uh, Flutter documentation and the Flutter YouTube channel. If yeah, you yeah. go through that, that would be easy for you. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. That will definitely help them. Okay. okay, so we are going to conclude this meeting right now or a webinar okay. right now and we'll be meeting tomorrow at 12 p.m. sharp. Yes. Uh, yes. And I request everyone to come sharp at sharp 11.55 because uh, I don't uh, I wouldn't want everyone to miss out some starting portion, you know. So that would be cause a difficulty to understand the um, further portion. So, okay, thank you everyone. We'll conclude the meeting right now. Okay, sir? Yes, okay. Yeah.